Hello. Um, I don't do videos like this very often, but I turned my Vermona kick samples that I made a couple weeks ago into contact instruments. And yeah, just wanted to share those. I wish I could have done decent sampler, but I wasn't familiar with it. I was at least a little familiar with contact, so I assumed it would be easier. I'm not sure if it was, but you know, we have these for now, and then hopefully I can get around to a decent sampler version that everyone can use at some point. But uh, you have all the tools that I do, so if you want to make your own, I'm just using the samples I've already given you to make these, so you are more than welcome to put them in any sampler you want. Um, by the way, pretty much anything that I do from scratch, I try to make Creative Commons CC0, which is public domain, essentially. So, you know, use them, manipulate them, put them in your own thing, charge money for it. I really don't care. It's, it's all yours. Um, I make these to solve problems that I have in my own mixing, like that it's really hard on the Vermona kick to tune it, and you can't play chromatically on a keyboard. Um, it has MIDI in, but it only does the note C2, and it's just acting as a drum trigger. You have to use the actual tuning knob on the unit to tune it, and it's very finicky. So, yeah, I made these for me, but I hope you get some use out of them as well. Oh, and it, just to be clear, I still like the hardware unit. Maybe I'll do a review at some point. But it's not going anywhere, it's really fun to perform on, but I love these all the same, and it's probably how I'm going to do it when I need, like, kick basses and specifically tuned things, you know, like 808 bass lines. Alright, uh, let's get into it. I figured I'd show off the instruments, and then show you some process versions I've been working on, just to get an idea of some fun ways you can manipulate them. Okay, so starting out, we have Dirty Kicks. Oh. There we go. Yep. And then these buttons are going to be the same for all of them, and this just engages a bass amp, which you can find here. And uh, once that's engaged, the dirt level set how loud it gets, so. Yep, you can turn it up pretty loud. It's actually increasing the gain, so if you turn it all the way, you may clip. But yeah, just keep it low, and it should be good. Also, um, this curve knob right here, that's a, so if you have the attack kind of high, you can do a fake side chain. Versus this one, it's kind of a steeper roll off. And then this one is sort of slower to get there, so, versus, and then yeah, control click to set it back to default, okay, next one, that's the high end, low end, Distortion. Then all the way. Yeah. 
Yep. Number three, Festival Kicks. Yeah. Sounds way better with distortion. Yep, I like that. Okay. FM kicks. And then with distortion. If I remember right, it sounds kind of chip tuney if you have it short. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. And then FM kicks distorted, same thing, but way louder. And then uh, with even more distortion from that bass amp on it. It's got a really interesting tail, so. Yeah, if you want the tail to go away. <laughs> there you go. But I think it's really interesting. Yep. All right, mild thump kicks. This is another one which I think works in a mix but doesn't sound super interesting on its own. And yeah, better with distortion. Yep. And then this might be my favorite. It's the Unsens kick. Yeah. I don't know. Just makes me feel good. And then with distortion. Yeah, so if you want to do like hard style kind of stuff. Yep. Okay, so that's all of the basic ones. And then I thought I'd show you like some quick and dirty effects and stuff. Um, I don't expect you to recreate these. This is more just how I might use them and things that maybe you wouldn't try at first. So, yeah. Um, if you don't have these plugins, don't worry about it. You know, do your own thing. I'm just using presets for 90, probably 99% of it. But I think they're worth showing off because you can do some really outlandish things. Like... that dirty kicks again and going through it take off that tuner um yep it's alive fuzzy mango on it blee ass chorus and this right here in reaper you can Manipulate any parameter, uh, which I'll do right now. See, dry and wet. Go to param, parameter, yeah, parameter modulation MIDI link. Hit 
LFO and enable and look at it go. You can adjust the strength, the starting position, etc. So yeah, I just did that with the filter cutoff to get... Let's see... Yeah, so that's fun. Um, did I accidentally start recording? How did that happen? Well, okay, anyway, on to the second one. That's the high end, and on the low end, Yeah, this is this is why I use the uh oh I clipped, sorry. Um this is why I use the headroom version of these to give me six dB of headroom so I could do processing like this. Alright, so the first one, bit crusher. Love that. And then Rift, doing a rectifier. So that's most of the way there. Mongoose is just removing some of the stereo width from the low end. So it doesn't get muddy as much. And then, yeah, just a tape echo. And then, um, yeah, just my go-to reverb VST. Um, with some pre-delay, I usually do 10 to 20 seconds, way closer to 10, or sorry, milliseconds. 10 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds for stuff like this, closer to 10 usually, and then um, EQing out the low end. So yeah, um, again, these are ungodly loud. If I was actually mixing it and stuff, I'd be more careful, but I was just having fun here. Um, let's see. It's like chip tune hard style. <laughs> chip crusher? Yeah, um, this isn't adding compression, it's actually adding distortion from a Zener compressor. So, just slightly louder, more gritty. Shaper Box 3. This has a really weird tail, especially with the chip crusher and stuff on. Yeah, so it's just reining that in. And then this is doing almost a comb filter effect by just putting it on ratio and turning the delay anywhere from like 10 to 30. And then I'm filtering out the low end from it doing that. So yeah. Uh, I can't remember if I said it already, but I'm using these mostly as kick basses. So I figure they can take up quite a bit of room in a mix. Yep. All right, on to number four. Yeah, not doing a whole lot there. Yeah, scooping the mids, fracture. Fracture on its own is... So 
So there's that. Uh, by the way, this is Fracture is free from air windows, and it's just doing its own distortiony thing. Yeah, removing a lot of stereo width from quite a bit of this, and then doing that comb filtery sound. Yeah. And then this, this is why I use this as my main reverb, because did my usual tricks here, but then high passed it quite a bit just at the beginning. And then um yeah, low passed a little at the start of the reverb too. Just so as much of that initial low end. hits as possible. Oh yeah, I even damped the low end. I can't remember if I did that with the others. All right, and then this one is kind of the same, but louder because it's the FM with distortion. Is that right? Yep. Yes, it is. So this is crazy. Yeah, and that does not take much to be much louder. Same preset as the other. Fracture, pretty sure it's the same. And then... Yeah, uh, I think I didn't high pass this one, but everything else is the same, so... Does it sound like high passed really quick? Does that... Oh yeah, I thought it was just a little too clean, so. Ooh, that sounds cool, but I clipped a lot. So maybe that's why I did that that way. Yeah, because now I've got some headroom. Okay, uh, six. All right, base to base on its own. Wow, that's doing a lot of heavy lifting. Then, uh, yeah, bit crusher. Making it even dirtier, and then... Good old tape delay, removing some of the low end, and then... Yeah, the, the chorus doing a reverby sound versus. So that's fun. I wonder what it sounds like with the moving chorus from this. What about both? Is it going to do? kind of cool. All right. And then on to the last one. That's kind of fun. Um, let's see. Scrolling down, scrolling down. This takes a while. Yeah, I wonder. So I think you have as much distortion as you would want. And then can I do a chip tuny kind of? I like that a lot. 
What is making that make such weird sounds? All right, so yeah, I might, can I not parameter lock this? Parameter modulation, oh, I don't know how to do it with this, but that'd be really cool to just. So I'll do that at some point, but. So that's fracture. Then we got shaper box. Just doing some wave folding in the mid range. Then we got Valhalla delay. Doing that crunchy comey thing I like. Wow, yeah, uh, anything under 836 is a slow mono slope. But it works. And then again, Zener just adding distortion. So yeah, um, so there you have it. These are some ways you can use these. I think they're a lot of fun. I keep wanting to just play with them, which is a good sign. And I hope you like them too. Uh, I did not do the clicky kicks. I may get around to those. It's just, I don't, I don't know. I was struggling to figure out a way to make them sound good and have some extra controls that I wanted and not mess with this layout too much because I'll be honest, I'm still figuring contact out. So I'll get around to that at some point, but I didn't want you know, there to be a huge wait while I figure that out. And yeah, these are yours to play with. And uh, if you click this wrench and go in here and go to the script editor, feel free to copy paste this, use it in whatever, um, manipulate it, that would be cool. Uh, the dirt parameter is the dirt level. And then the one labeled mix, that's going to be uh, the button. So just so you know, this is labeled dirt and this is labeled mix, but otherwise you, you know what to play with now. So have fun, make your own instruments, experiment, throw on a billion effects like I tend to do. And yeah, peace. <laughs>